We're now going to move on and I'm going to explain how we're going to be using our special triangles, but instead using them with radians. Okay, so you've seen what the special triangles look like um, when everything is measured in radians versus degrees. But this is the next step that we're going to take a look at because when we're dealing with angles, as you remember, right, we are taking a look at the degree theta in here. And when we're solving for this angle, in the past, we have used SOHCAHTOA, right? Dealing with our sine, cos, and tan. So we use this to either solve for an angle inside of a right triangle, because this has to be a right angle, okay? Or we've used SOHCAHTOA to solve a missing side length, right? Where this was the, this was my theta, that would make this my opposite, that would make this my adjacent, and that would make this here my hypotenuse, okay? So let's just review our SOHCAHTOA ratios again, okay? So I've got sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cos of theta equals my adjacent over my hypotenuse, and finally my tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. This is the stuff we've been using for a few years now to solve these triangles. But now that we're dealing with radians and the unit circle, right, we are going to be using something a little bit different. But one thing that's still the same is when you are sketching something out, you've seen a plane like this, right? This axis was always my x-axis, and this was always my y-axis. So if I were to draw a right angle triangle on a plane here, on a graph, that would make this piece down here the x component for my x axis, and it would make this component here my y component for my y axis. Well, if this was a unit circle, right, this would have gone up and around, made one big, I'm gonna obviously not a perfect circle, right? This would have been one big circle. That would make this piece right here the radius of that circle, right? So I can actually break down any right triangle into my three components. My x component, which is always the horizontal, the y component, which is always the vertical, and the radius. Right, which is the diagonal, right, the slanted piece. So I can actually rewrite all of my three known trig ratios in terms of x, y, and r. Because that's what we're going to be moving forward to use. So let's take a look at what each of those are. You can have, there's a little bit of a cheat sheet here below, okay, but I wanted you to see where all of that comes from. So according to sine, I have my opposite over my hypotenuse. Okay, well, my opposite here is my y. Okay. It's going to be y. And it's going to be over my hypotenuse piece, which now we know from the unit circle is r. So that's where this sine theta equals y over r comes from. Well, let's see if it matches for the other three. My adjacent, well, my adjacent here was the x component over my hypotenuse, which is the radius of the circle, which is r. And my cos is x over r. x over r. And finally, tan my opposite. So what is my opposite here? It is y over 
And what's my adjacent to this triangle? Well, it's my x component. So that's where the tan theta equals y over x comes from. Okay. Now you can also think of it, and if this helps you remember, okay, y is our vertical component. So sine is always the vertical. So sine deals with the vertical. Going forward, when I have my x, my x is my horizontal component. So the cos always deals with the horizontal. This might sound familiar from physics if you guys have taken that. Okay. And finally, my tan. Okay. When I think of tan, it's y over x. Right. You can also think of tan as your slope. Right. Rise over run. So your vertical over your horizontal. So if if that's helpful to remember going forward, okay, then try and remember that little trick. But that's what I'm going to be referring to. So if we're talking about y, we're talking about sine. Okay, if we're dealing with cos, we're talking about the x component. So that's something that's really important to remember. Now, way back, we talked about the reciprocal trig functions. Okay, well cosecant is the same as 1 over sine theta, okay? which is why sine ratios are flipped for cosecant. The same with secant, which is 1 over cos theta. Right? The r and the x are flipped. And finally, cotan is the same as 1 over tan theta, which is why the x and the y are flipped. Okay, so this is something right here. This is what you guys are going to have to memorize. Okay, this is very, very important. We're going to be using it through all of this chapter as well as the next chapter. So this is very important. Must, must, must memorize okay because you're going to be using this over and over and over again so it's very very important to get this going now okay. as we're going to go through and solve for these angles the same thing that we do in every trig unit okay so solving for angles or solving for side lengths okay there is a little trick that might be helpful going forward so let's take a look at that and that is the cast rule Okay, now you've been, you may have seen this before where cast, the C A S T, and for the C A S T here, it tells you what trig ratio is positive in that quadrant, right? Because this is quadrant one, two, three, four. So this is cos, it says cos is positive in quadrant four, everything is positive in quadrant one, sine is positive in quadrant two and only tan is positive in quadrant three. Well, let's figure out why that is. Okay, so remember when we're dealing with a Cartesian plane, right, this would have been my x component, right, and this, or my x axis, and this would have been my y axis. Okay, so when we think of everything being positive in here, if I look at my x component, right? Remember, my x component is my cos, so cos theta x over r. Right? Here, my the x-axis is positive, right? So that means cosine will be positive right here, but it's also going to be positive right here. So x is positive here, and x is positive here. And if x is positive, that means cos will be a positive value. 
Now we're taking a look at quadrant one. What about y? Well, let's remember y is actually coming out of my sine ratio, right? Because it's y over r. Well, up here, my y is positive. Right here, everything up here gives me a positive value for y. Okay, so that's why in this quadrant, y is also positive. So both x and y, both sine and cos, are going to be positive here. And when I say all, it's not just sine and cos, it also means tan, right? Because tan of theta deals with both y and x. And if both x and y are positive, that means tan is also positive. So that's why it says all are positive in this quadrant. Okay? But what about over here? Let's talk about quadrant two. It says only sine is positive. Well, sine deals with the y, and that actually makes sense, right? Because even over here, my y coordinate or my y component is still going to be positive up here. Y is positive. But what about x? What about cos? Well, on this side of my axis, we know that this would have all have been my negative x values. So that is why x is negative over here, which means cos would be negative. And then when we go to move to tan, if we have a positive over a negative number, that would also give me a negative. So that's why sine, or y, is the only one that's positive here. Moving on to my next quadrant. Okay. Quadrant three. Well, we still know that x is negative over here. We've already talked about that, right? x is negative here. But what about the y? Right? My y here, down here, is also negative. Right? This is where all the negative y values are. So down here, y is also negative. Okay. So both x and y are negative in this quadrant here. But it tells me that tan is positive. Well, let's take a look at y, right? Or why that is, not y. Well, tan is y over x. But if both of these are negative, a negative divided by a negative will, in fact, give me a positive. That's why tan is the only ratio that is positive down here, because both x and y are, are negative, and a negative divided by a negative gives us a positive number. Okay. So we'll finish it off, quadrant four. Well, we've already said that x is positive, right? Because this is where all the positive x's live. But down in here, my y's would be negative. So that is why the only piece that is positive here is the x, and the x has to do with the cosine. So cosine is the only one that's positive, because this is our negative y value area, which means sine would be negative. And when we take a look at tan, if I have a, po if I have a negative, divided by a positive, that will still give me a negative number down here. So while cos is positive, sine and tan will be negative down here. So we are actually going to be using this idea quite often throughout this unit, because we're going to have to be very careful about where our triangles will be living when we sketch on our Cartesian plane, because I've always found that sketching something out and seeing it visually in front of me helps me come to the right answer.